Some tracker meteorologist Christina Shalhoop is tracking the latest developments on Hurricane Helene. What are we seeing right now, Christina? Oh, it's not a great situation right now, John. Honestly, pretty rough for not just Florida, but so much of the southeastern United States. Millions of people in harm's way with this storm. And I say that for two reasons, right? Not only is this storm physically massive, this is an enormous storm, but it's also intensifying. Take a look at the infrared satellite imagery. Winds of up to 125 miles per hour just to let you know category four status begins at 130. So you can see how much this storm has beefed up over the last few hours. Now moving at 23 miles per hour to the north northeast. That is tremendously speedy compared to the 12 miles per hour. It was going earlier this morning. A huge difference as this storm gains strength and intensity heading toward the big bend of Florida. In fact, it's not all that far away. I actually want to put a little measurement on this. So when it comes to landfall as meteorologists, we generally look from the center of the eye to the shore. So about 151 miles until this storm makes landfall in Florida. At this point, in terms of a timeline, we're looking at really as we get to about midnight tonight. So we're going to keep a very close eye on that track. But we're also going to keep a close eye on so many of the threats coming from a storm like this. Unless you've been through a tropical cyclone, it's kind of hard to know this. So allow me to educate you a little bit for those of you who maybe have family and friends in this area. Not only do we keep an eye on storm surge, of course, those hurricane force winds. I feel like that's always the talk, right? The winds, the winds, the winds. But some of the biggest dangers actually also come from flooding, flash flooding and severe weather, including tornadoes. Why is that the case? Well, typically we see tornadic activity in the northeast quadrant of the storm because that storm as it rotates counterclockwise smacks into the land that side of the storm, creating friction. Friction creates something we call wind shear, which is a major ingredient in tornadic activity. It's the difference in wind speed and direction as you go up through the atmosphere. So what have we been seeing? Little spin ups. They're fast. They go up, they go down, they go up, they go down. And that's been the case for so much of Florida. Two tornado warnings right now, one for Port Charlotte and then one just on north north of the city of Acadia and then on the east coast of the Sunshine State. Just as we're getting to the west of St. Augustine, another very textbook like tornadic cell just to the west of I-95. Again, another one of those threats we look at storm surge because it is actually the deadliest threat when it comes to tropical cyclones. Why is that the case? Well, we're talking about quite literally a wall of water making its way ashore and when it comes to Helene, that wall of water could be up to 20 feet tall, 15 to 20 feet for the big bend of Florida. And in case you're wondering what that looks like, imagine it just like this. We're talking about, let's say a house, a one story house, that wall making it up to the roof of the home. So obviously we're not messing around with a storm like this. It is that time where honestly anyone who's left in this area really has to hunker down and hopefully they prepared ahead of time. But more importantly, hopefully people evacuated. That's really all we can hope for at this point. Now, the good news is for us here in the ocean state, Helene's impacts won't be felt nearly to the impacts that they'll be felt in the southeast. But you know, Jeff, we've been talking about this behind the scenes quite a bit and of course on air as well. 